All right, before I even start this video, I have to say this is not real. Allegedly. Some people think it is, some people think it isn't. I'll give you my opinion at the end. So, today we're talking about kinetic bombardment, which is just the United States Air Force's rebranding of the oldest unhealth care technique known to mankind. Dropping heavy sh stuff on people that you don't like. Buh, can't swear for the first 30 seconds. Buh. You see, it all started in 1967 at the height of the space race. Pretty much all the countries on the planet got together and signed a treaty that basically said we're not gonna drop WMDs on each other from outer space. Yes, America and the Soviet Union both signed this, surprisingly. Fast forward to 2003 and the American Air Force decides they're gonna lose all of their chill. They crack open the rule book and start looking for loopholes. That's when they realize that a weapon of mass destruction is defined as a nuclear weapon, a biological weapon, or a chemical weapon. So they proposed making a weapon system that was none of those things. Basically, they wanted to put a satellite into orbit and fill it full of tungsten rods that were 20 feet long and one foot in diameter and then merely drop them on bad guys from outer space. The theory being that it would generate the same destructive force as a nuclear warhead, but it wouldn't have any radioactive fallout. Yeah, Uncle Sam's trying to have a vegetarian option for weapons of mass destruction. A vegan nuke, if you will. Because, well, it's never a war crime the first time. Can't be illegal if I just made it up. It takes a lot to surprise me when it comes to the American on healthcare system, but even I'm surprised that they legitimately proposed making the grunt caveman version of the Death Star. Who needs a giant lady? laser beam when you could just yeet metal telephone poles at people from outer fucking space, apparently. Yeet's not even the right term, they just gotta Elsa that shit. Let, it go. Let gravity do all the dirty work. But saying it has the same destructive power as a nuke is just simply not true. But a lot of people don't believe that thanks to movies like G.I. Joe, and the Call of Duty Ghost video game that portrays it as being more powerful than a nuclear warhead. which it simply just isn't. Buh, how do you know? Buh, fucking math. Math is how I know. Look, a 20 foot rod of tungsten that was one foot in diameter would weigh approximately 24,000 pounds. Propelled by nothing but gravity, it would travel at a speed of Mach 5. Upon impact, it would generate the destructive force of approximately three to four tons of TNT, which is about equivalent to that of the Moab bomb, or commonly referred to as the mother of all bombs, which is the largest non-nuclear bomb ever dropped. By America, of course. America, fuck yeah. But when you compare that to an actual nuclear warhead, it's not even close. For example, Fat Man, one of the bombs dropped during World War II, had the destructive force of 20 kilotons of TNT. If you don't know, kilo means thousand. I still have no idea what the fuck a meter is though. Or a Celsius for that matter. Quit measuring temperature based off water, it's dumb. Use Fahrenheit, it's the easiest thing on the planet. Zero's cold as fuck, a hundred's hot as fuck. Hashtag science. <laughs> So a rod from God would have the destructive force of four tons of TNT versus 20,000 tons of TNT of one of the earliest nuclear bombs ever used. So you're off by a factor of about 5,000. So if it's not as destructive as a nuclear warhead, what would the actual advantage be? Well, it would be virtually unstoppable. You see, with a Moab or a nuclear warhead, you either have to deliver it by plane or you have to use an ICBM. Obviously, you can shoot down planes and there is a large array of different defenses against ICBMs. But there's really no modern defense method for somebody just dropping heavy shit on you from outer space. The classics are a classic for a reason. I mean, last I checked, the only way that we actually know of would be to hire Bruce Willis out of an oil field, teach him to become an astronaut, then send him and all of his friends up into outer space to blow it up before it could impact Earth. And this is the best that you could, that the, the government, the U.S. government can come up with? Oh, Jesus. Damn it. Given that a rod from God had impact within four to five minutes of being released, I just don't think we have time for that. So that just leaves, do I think it's real? Absolutely not. You see, according to NASA, it takes $10,000 to move a single pound of cargo into outer space. One rod from God being approximately 24,000 pounds, you're looking at $240 million just to get it into outer space, not including making it or making the satellite or maintaining it. So you're looking at roughly a trillion dollars for four rounds of ammunition, and probably another trillion for the satellite. So really at that point, the question becomes, do I think Uncle Sam would be willing to spend two trillion dollars for four bullets, just to avoid breaking a treaty from 1967? I'm gonna go with probably not. However, it's also important to mention that NASA believes that within the next couple of decades, the cost of getting one pound of cargo into outer space will decline from $10,000 to $100. And if that becomes the case, this very well could become a possibility. And there very well could be a fourth category of weapon of mass destruction, nuclear, biological, chemical, and heavy shit. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Best way to support the channel is go buy some merch at thefatelectrician.com. Quack bang, out. <laughs>